we're inching closer to kickoff in this one. Ben Holden, Ashley Burge with you. Fade Renite on the field. Fade will be joined by Dallin Stanford for the call of the men's matches here today. Headliners and experts making their way out. Second of two semifinals here. Emma Farnan there rocking yeah. some pink hair headliners. They love their pink. They are rocking on all weekend long. If you are the headliners who just beat the loggerheads last week in yep. D.C., you are feeling pretty good walking into this match. But it is going to take some newcomers like A.K. Pedraza to step in the shoes of Elena Olsen and make a very big difference. 26-year-old Captain Olsen not here. It's in the top seven last week of the selections. And for the experts, who should we keep our eyes on in your mind, Ashley? Amanda Berta has been a huge standout. And like we mentioned earlier, Susan Adagoki, I mean, she is the wheels around the corner. This field width and some handling by the experts is going to do her justice today. I'm also excited to see Nikki Kenyon. She's there in the camera in the middle of the field. She's been in and out of the sevens. Um, Olympic Training Center, a Life West player. She is very great with the feet. She's one of those players that just sees things one step faster than everybody else on the pitch. Andrew Locke, the head coach of this headliners team. You saw him, 37 years old, native of Houston, Texas. A couple hours from home. This one underway. The winner goes on to take on the Loonies in the women's final here later tonight. Let me turned over here as it's kicked into touch. What are you looking for early on, really, just in terms of this match? Hey, we're gonna, Momentum yeah, we're gonna is going right. to be key, and that happens with possession. We saw right earlier the way that the Loonies team. were really able to execute at the mark. end of the game was going sideline to sideline, hey, playing right to the here full Thank you. width of the field. You've got somebody like Abby Gostitis out there leading the headliners. Her skills, her fundamental patching, pass and catch is just beyond what some of these other girls are going to be able to keep up with. All right, good stuff. Shelly Swatzel is our... Referee wearing the wireless mic here for us. Opening minute of this one. Headliners team, they have come to play here. They had scored 17 tries in the first two stops of the series. Bounding ball near the halfway line into the hands there of Atagoki. Pink well, out, pink out. About. She's got five tries, does the Brooklyn, New York native. Stiff arm there. The Freitas with a the carry there. Ball's going to go over to the headliners. It's a newcomer as well, Evan Hazy. Stepping in for the experts. She's got a lot of speed, too, and a very big stiff arm. Yep, right here on me. If you guys will wait till that ball's in for the push, please. Sure. Thank you. First run down to the headliners. Crouch. Find. Set. Pedraza rolls in right there on the back of her there with Spencer Bolt. Able to get her down to the turf. Nowhere to go for Abby Gostitis. Now Farnan, former Notre Damer. The halfway line trying to stay in bounds. Good job to control the body there. They were trying to force her out. You go out, you're tackled into touch. That is a turnover. Kukutai got rid of it. Good little dummy there on the pass. Gastitis breaks through. Still charging ahead. We heard right in there on the tackle. We do have players wearing microphones, so we hope to bring you some of that throughout the course of our broadcast here today, the five hours of it. Both teams seem pretty physical in this one, don't they? Yeah, it was an incredible turnover there as well for the headliners. This defensive effort has been key. There has not been any breaks in the middle of the field, but it is lacking attack. They're lacking width. The ball is not moving anywhere up the side of the field. Although they're making their tackles, they're not missing much, but they're not really Scrum. using, Scrum. you know, what they can outside. You got Susan Adagoki out there. We've got to move the ball. Yes. Get it in her hands. They just played 10 phases of play back and forth within a 15 meter space of the pitch. When you see those numbers, how much do you factor in that does that does that make a whole lot of difference or not it absolutely does and i'm surprised to see the loonies so low you know they really execute that at the end of the game but there's a reason the headliners won last weekend and it's exactly that moving the ball using the width using some of your key players headliners last week beating the loggerheads in the final two weeks ago in dc <laughs> tightly played game here's farnan 
Farnan trying to break free. She does. Can she take it home? Farnan, the MVP, two weeks ago, diving, and it's down. New here, new same game. Her third try in the last two matches, and the headliners take a 5 nothing lead. It's a great look by the headliners here, finally using the width of the ball. It's bouncing around. You've executed 2v1 here, and then a surprising missed tackle by Amanda Berta. There's not many players that will not only outpace her on the field, but she has the strength to make those big tackles. And Sue Adigo keeps flying from the other sideline. If there was 10 more meters on the pitch, Emma Farnan would have been caught. She dives in there to get it down, make it a 5 nothing game. The conversion kick, no good. But with two and a half to go, Farnan trotting into position. Now she'll go on the far side across from us here on this kick. Here we go. Saw them play one to her in that final a couple of weeks ago. And Olsen kicked to her, but not this time. Direct kick off to the experts. Let's see what their response is. Nearly coughed it up there, but they get it back. Here you go. You talked about her. Here she comes, charging out to the halfway line, runs over one, still going. Oh my goodness, she's trying to go the distance, gets it back, beautiful pass, they're gonna take it right between the sticks and down. DeFridis puts it away. That was all Adagoki, all her, and this thing is tied at five. It was scored by Nikki Kenyon. She is a scrum half in 15, so she's doing what she knows best, which is supporting the ball. Sue Adagoki, that is just full effort, full wheels, and then she transfers the ball, uses her fen, keeps her eyes up and open, and she finds Nikki Kenyon on the inside. That is a classic Nikki Kenyon line, dotting it down, well-deserved for the experts. My apologies. You are right, Kenyon, with it, but there she is. You raved about her, and for good reason. My goodness, what an effort turned in there by Sue Adagoki. Kenyon with her first try. Conversion kick was good. It's 7-5 experts. These are important ones. They're up by two now. There's been a lot of misconversions so far today, Everybody. and it makes a difference in these knockout matches. The Loonies won our first match. You're just tuning in on Fubo Sports, upsetting the loggerheads. So they await the winner of this one. The two losers will play in the consolation game. Much there for Grace Kukutai. They get it outside now. Headliners to the halfway line. Track down from behind. They get into the rock quick. Get it free. Stiff arm there, looking for an offload. Deflected ball. Okay, Miners are on it. Look off there. Gestitis over the top. We get a whistle here from Joey Swatzel, our lead referee. But I saw the same thing you did. Abby Gestaitis, she knows the game so well. She'll be real quick to let the referee know if he doesn't <laughs> see something she sees. Just as we heard there, he said, hey, look, I heard it, I got it. If that pass goes away before contact there, the headliners are again scoring down in the corner. It's a break for the experts. What I would expect as a key stakeholder, Spencer Bolt with the ball right now, it is 7-5. Whistle just blows for half. Easily get this Fine. one back to Nikki Kenyon. Kick it out of bounds. Set. Take yourself some breath. They follow the script while it came back to her. And that's going to be it. So a 7-5 count. The experts get the go-ahead conversion kick after the tying try from Kenyon. After Farnan made it 5-0, 7-5 experts at the half. Our halftime score, the experts on top of the headliners. Headliners, the two seed, the experts, the three seed, separated by five points coming in. Ben Holden with Ashley Burge in the booth. Pedro Knight down on the pitch. What are your biggest takeaways or takeaway from that first half? There's been a lot of impact from newcomer Jade McGrath stepping in as the experts captain this week. Sue Adagoki driving her legs to the tackles. We knew she was going to be a standout. The headliners, they're missing that little bit of grit, that little bit of 
you know, just experience in the middle of the field with Elena Olsen being out, I'm really going to need to see Abby Gostaitis step up as a key stakeholder and a leader in the rest of this match. All right. Penalty call there on the experts. Restart quick from the headliners. Opening 20 seconds here of half number two. The winner goes on to take on the Loonies in the women's final. They upset the top seed, the Loggerheads, in our first match of the day here in Austin. By 10, 22 to 12. Blow this dead. They were holding her up there, wouldn't let her go, so it's gonna go over to the Blue experts one. here. Blue one, you're getting sub. Blue one. For a sub here. Camille Johnson's gonna come in for Amanda Berta on the expert side. Let's check in with Phaedra Knight down on the sidelines. Sadra. Yeah, the conditions are great down here. It's obviously warm because we're in Texas, but the wind is a non-issue. The playing surface is phenomenal, and the energy from both benches is pretty intense. Set. That pitch is something. I needed golf clubs down there when we walked in. I wanted to hit a pitching wedge off this field. Man, is it beautiful. Great condition here. The stadium's only 13 months old. Home of Austin FC. Here we go now. Minute and a half gone here in half number two. Experts with it, they've got the lead. Adagoki, good step there, had it knocked free, came back, but it's a knock on called on the experts, goes over to the headliners. Yep, it's a great impact by Monique Coffey, who also just stepped on the field from the headliners. She was incredible in DC. She was. On attack, that ball got in her hands, and she was just wheels down, foot on the pedal, and never let up. So to step onto the field and make a very impactful play like that right from the beginning, I expect to see a lot of good stuff with her for the rest of the day. She's Coach. a product of Dauphin, Manitoba, up in Canada. Blind. And Set. the hat trick two weeks ago in D.C. Played college at Acadia University. Out the Maritimes in Canada. It's into her hands now. She can fly. Gets a step. Takes it out wide. Moni Coffey trying to break free. She does. And Coffey right on cue. Ashley will put it down right between the posts. How's that for an instant impact? And it shows you just what those fresh legs can do. Because if you put Sue Adagoki and Monique Coffey on the try line and have them race to the 50. I'm not even sure who's going to win that race, but Sue Adegoki has had so many long runs this match, she just didn't have it in the tank. That's a very important, you think about Andrew Locke and his experience. He knows how to start a team. Mm -hmm. He knows how to sub a team. There are certain players that make an impact, and just like that, bringing um, Monique Coffey onto the field later in this match made a very big difference. She's got four tries. In the last two weekends, I ran into it this morning. You were talking earlier about the, the family feel this sport has in this series. And I got on the elevator. I said, you're going to score another hat trick this weekend. She said, I hope so. And she has some family in town. So she is a complete game changer. And trainers have been busy here. I mean, it's week, it's week three of a, of a seventh <laughs> series, you know. It's a, a lot of rugby here. So, you know, seeing players like that, even a newcomer, hey, it is number tough one, on the body. Herself. Well, you mentioned that young lady, Abby Gostaitis, of course an Olympian, and the impact you feel she needs to make here. Yeah, the biggest thing is she's not just an Olympian, she was the Olympic captain. Yeah. She captained the U.S. Eagles for many, many, many series stops. So what that brings, being an Olympian, yes, you've got the skills, you've got the ability, whatever that is. Being the captain, she has the leadership. She knows how to take a team, whether they are down, whether they are up, just to lead through some of those really hard fighting moments and I think that is what is going to be crucial it's now 7 to 12 three minutes into second half her leadership is what is going to make a difference here all right the experts player you saw using the top of her kit there working her way off there is Evan Hazy take her off and check her out She's going to be bummed about that one. She's a newcomer this week, a great player, didn't really get a chance to shine quite yet, and is being carted off with an injury. So 12-7 after the try and the kick for the headliners as Coffee came in and gave him instant impact. That did not go 10 meters on the kick, so it goes over to the experts here. to get this level and they hope take the lead here potentially. Hard charging run there. Spencer Bold had it there. 
Farnan trying to make the tackle. It's on the back of the ball carrier. It finally does. Three and a half to go. Halfway through the second half. High tackle there. Looked like it coming in there by the headliners. Quick restart. DeFritis has it. It's a cut back inside. Does good look there. Offload, big hit there. Ball's turned over and the headliners have got it here. Yeah, the experts are they're just running sideways on the field. They're not letting the ball do the work. If you stay square, the ball moves faster than the person. We see them really dragging themselves back and forth. A major hit by Abby Gostaitis on Spencer Bolt there to pop the ball out. That's a great break by the headliners, and now they've just got to think possession. It is 7 to 12. Crouch! See where the team stacked Bind. up entering series stop Set. three here in Austin in terms of tackles. To the back now. Headliners got a long way to go. Looking to add to a five point lead. This is going to help them out immensely. Can she outrun everybody? Grace Kukutai, she's got one. Bearing down on her, but Kukutai is going to get in there and get it down. And it's a 10 point lead with a kick pending. Great effort there by Amanda Berta. I almost thought for a split second she was going to catch her. Just finding some space in the middle of the field. Missed tackle by Nikki Kenyon. A little bit of confusion on defense. And all it took was the pace to get it in. That's the beautiful game in Five. sevens, right? You can change it in one play like that. It is something to see. Fun to watch in a big time run from Grace Kukutai there. That's her fifth try of the series. Conversion kick is good. So it's a 12 point differential with 95 seconds to go here, Ashley. But I wouldn't count the experts out. You see KB Slaughter now in on the field for the experts. She's rocking a new do. Got a whole mullet going on for the weekend. Really? You know, I don't know if that gives you some power or what, but I trust the ball in that girl's hands to you, make a difference. It's got to give you some more swag, right? Absolutely. I mean, if she didn't already have well, enough. Right. Headliners trying to move on to the final. The Loonies await. They upset the Loggerheads. The 4 1 matchup goes the way of the four seed, Time is on the Loonies. The experts had eight players on the field there for a split second, so KB Slaughter has actually now stepped off. Hmm. 50 seconds and counting remaining here in this one. Gestitis right there. They get it free, spun free by Bolt. Tackle there made by Coffey. She took down Berta. 30 seconds remaining. Farnan, good tackle there in the open field. The experts just don't have enough depth on attack. They're getting themselves tackled while they're catching the ball. Depth is key here in the sevens pitch. Trying to make a run again. There's the speed of Coffey making another tackle there. And it's going to be turned over here, and it's going to go over to the headliners here. And they can just run this down here. Yeah, Abby Gostaitis knows. She's telling them exactly what to do. There's three seconds on the clock. You tap the ball. You walk backwards till the referee says, OK, time is up. And you kick it right out of bounds. Big six. Put it on the conversation. Yep, exactly. Yeah. That's just the leadership. Because guess yep. what? In a high pressure situation like this, if you tap the ball standing up, you may have done it a hundred times, but there's a chance you're going to knock it on. It's just taking away the chance of error here. Tap it on the ground. That's great leadership by Abby Gostaitis. Yep. You talked about it since the start of that one. And the headliners trying to write another headline when they go on to the women's final. They'll take on the Loonies. They win this 19 to 7. Farnan, Coffee, and Kukutai, the tries for the headliners. Grace Kukutai watching herself in the big screen, took one the distance, 19-7 the final. <laughs>